Hi, my name is Johnny and this is our Church Family Focus. Now, when things happen, sometimes everyone is happy. Now, when some other things happen, everyone is sad. But a lot of things happen that make some people happy and some people sad at the same time. Let me give you a few examples and wherever you are, you can say, whether these things made you happy or sad. And it might be for some of you, you couldn't care less. Here's one example. Not too long ago, Manchester City lost a football match to Chelsea, which meant that Liverpool won the league. Now, did that make you happy or sad? Lots of mixed reactions, I'm sure. Or let's go back a bit further, back to December, when there was a general election, we got to pick who ran our country. And Boris Johnson and the Conservative Party won it. Now, did that make you happy or sad? Let's use our imagination for a few more pretend things that could happen. I want you to imagine that someone in your house is in charge of picking a film to watch this evening. And they pick this film. Frozen 2. Now, does that choice make you happy or sad? Um, what about this? Imagine you've managed to go on holiday, or maybe you're just having a staycation, and someone is in charge of picking the day's activity, and they say, I have planned a really long walk. Now, for a walk, a really, really long one. Is that something you think, great, I'm really excited about that? Or are you thinking, no, I hate walks? Here is the last scenario. Now, I want you to imagine that you are going to a socially distanced picnic and someone is in charge of making sandwiches. This is a bit of a classic and they bring out the sandwiches, and you ask, oh, what's in the sandwiches? And they tell you, it's Marmite. Now, are you happy about these sandwiches, or do you hate Marmite? And you think, oh no, these are going to be disgusting. Those are some silly examples. In our true story from the Bible today, something amazing happened, and there were very different reactions to it. Let me tell you what happened. So, there's a woman, and this woman had a problem with her back. Her back was bent over. She couldn't straighten her back. And she'd been like that for 18 years. And that's longer than lots of you guys have been alive. Can you imagine living like that where you couldn't straighten your back? You couldn't stand up straight and see what's around you and enjoy it all. That must have been really, really hard for that lady. But listen to what happened. Jesus met her. Jesus saw her. And we're told that he put his hands on her. And immediately, for the first time in 18 years, she straightened her back. And she could walk around. And the first thing she did was praise God. Now surely, this is the kind of thing. Not that some people think, oh that's good. Some people think that's bad. But everyone thinks this is an amazing thing. And lots of people did. We're told that lots of people were delighted with the things like this that Jesus was doing. But there were a group of people who didn't like that Jesus did this. They didn't like Jesus doing these sort of things at all. Now you might think, well that is ridiculous. But what, what's that got to do with me? Well, the thing is, we might not be like this woman and have a problem like this with our back. But the Bible tells us this is a picture of what we're like without God in our lives because we reject him. We haven't physically hurt our backs, but we're living a life that is completely restricted and we need setting free by Jesus. We need to decide, are we people that love Jesus and love him doing that sort of thing and even want him to do that for us in our lives? Or are we a bit like those people who didn't like what Jesus 
did to that lady. Because ultimately, we don't want Jesus to have anything to do with our lives and don't want Jesus to free us from the problems that we have when we reject God. I'm going to pray to God and ask him that we would be like this woman and like all those people who love the things Jesus did and would even want Jesus to do it in our lives as well. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this amazing story. Thank you so much for all the amazing things Jesus did to heal people and help people in their lives. Thank you that you do that with every single one of us who want Jesus in our lives and you free us, you liberate us to help us live the life we were meant to. Help us not be like those people who didn't like what Jesus was doing, but accept Jesus doing that in our lives.